can relate to Nicodemus, it's probably a lot like us, at least when we first started thinking about coming to know Jesus. So he'd heard of this person. He knew he was a rabbi, but not the typical rabbi, because Jesus was wandering around doing things that the typical rabbis weren't doing. He was healing people. He was out in the countryside with people who you wouldn't really want to associate with. He was feeding people. So Nicodemus, who was part of, who was a Pharisee and probably a good person going to the synagogue, praying to God, keeping the laws of the Jewish faith, wanted to find out who this rabbi was and what he was doing, since he wasn't the typical rabbi. So he snuck out at night to go see him, because he probably didn't want any of his other Pharisee friends seeing him going to talk to this guy. And so, like us, he wanted a deeper relationship. He wanted to get to know who this Jesus was. So he goes and he has this conversation, which doesn't sound very satisfying, because he goes to talk to Jesus, and Jesus starts telling him, you need to be born from above, you need to be born from water and the Spirit, and he's like, well, I'm an old man, how do I get back into my mother and get born again? He's kind of a literal guy, not quite getting this, and, and it's like, have you ever gone and asked somebody a question and they give you some answer that you can barely understand and it doesn't seem to make any sense, and you feel a little frustrated because you think you're going to get the answer and you're going to be able to satisfy the longing that maybe you have in your heart. You open yourselves up and, and you don't get it. It doesn't make sense. So it seems like Nicodemus goes away from this encounter trying to figure out what does it mean to be born again or be born from above. So. It, we have to stop and think, what does that mean? And what does that mean for us? Now, we certainly have probably encountered people in our lives that have been born again. Have you ever met anyone who's asked you, have you been born again? And they've been born again? I have, and typically, the people who say they've been born again have a lot of energy. And they want you to be born again, too. And I've experienced that, and I'm sitting there going, whoa, <laughs> back off, people. You know, it's, it's, a, it's that kind of like over-encompassing, overwhelming kind of you must, you must, you must, and that's like the last thing you say to me, because if someone's telling me I must, I just put up that wall. But it's interesting to hear the stories of people who have literally been hit over the head, probably a bad metaphor, but have been struck by God in such a way that it creates this incredible sense of energy and then desire to go out and tell everybody. And then you think, wow, what's wrong with me? How come I haven't had such an intense conversion experience? Well, maybe we have had a conversion experience, but we haven't been able to recognize it. Or maybe you're like me, where you've had kind of a drip of water forever and ever of constant little experiences of, of Jesus. And it finally, one day you wake up and go, oh yeah. Kind of like you look back over your life with new perspective, with a different lens as you analyze things that have happened to you and you begin to put it in a context of a deepening relationship with Jesus. Well, there was this church I heard about on this trip I took last week from another uh, priest out in San Francisco in the red light district of San Francisco, a Methodist church where people line up around the block to get in. And I said to her, wow, what's the attraction? Why, why do people want to go to this church? And she said it's because people get up and tell their stories of how they meet Jesus. And she said it takes its people from all walks of life, and every Sunday they gather together to hear the testimony. Like what Jesus was saying to Nicodemus, aren't you listening to the testimony? And he was kind of blind to it. He had seen the feeding and the healing, but he wasn't connecting with what that meant 
with who that might make Jesus and what kind of person that made Jesus, somebody reaching out in love to feed and to heal and to love. So at this church in San Francisco, this woman was describing people getting up and first person who gets up, obviously kind of a woman of the streets, and she gets up and she says, I got to tell you, last week I didn't have enough money to pay my rent, and I went and told my girlfriend, and she, got, she gave me some money, and my other girlfriend gave me some money, and this other person I met on the street gave me some money, and I was able to cobble together enough money to pay my rent, and that's how I know Jesus loves me. And then she, she sits down, and this other woman comes up, and she hands her mink coat to the the guy, the usher, and she gets up there and she says, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do after my husband died, and I had all this money that he had left me, and I, I took it, and now I'm feeding 5,000 people. This wealthy, rich woman stands up and she goes, that's how I know that Jesus loves me and is in the world and helping people. And person after person after person would get up and talk about how they knew Jesus. And it was obvious that through their experience, whatever it was, whether they were trying to get enough money for rent or whether they were giving lots of money to help in a feeding program, whatever it was, it became apparent that they had all been transformed through some experience that they connected with Jesus. That being born from above or being born again or being born from water and the Spirit is really about opening ourselves up to transformation. That we don't just take in the events of our lives or the events of the world, but we take it in, we open our hearts to it, and we allow ourselves to be changed by it. This is how we develop a closer and deeper relationship with Jesus. And we encounter Jesus in everyone we meet. The person checking us out at the grocery store, the person in the toll booth, the person we, we meet on the street, the people that we're closest to, the people that we come together and worship with. We meet Jesus in every human face that we encounter. And through those encounters, we can allow ourselves to be transformed. In this day and age, we can meet Jesus on the Internet. We look at pictures from Japan. We hear the news from Libya. We feel, we see the suffering of, of others. And we can think about how is Jesus present in that? How will that change me as someone who desires to know Jesus, the love of God, that we know through this person, Jesus. And so it's important, particularly in this season of the church year, to take time to reflect on that, to reflect on the most mundane encounters that we have on a day-to-day -day basis. And think about how does that change us? Chris, I'm going to tell your story. It was just too good. I, I, you know, Sid and I are standing greeting people at each door now on Sunday, and Chris comes in and said, you wouldn't believe what happened in my neighborhood today. There, she got in her car to drive to church, and she saw a bunch of neighbors standing around, and she stopped the car, and they said, we found this little kid in your yard, and there's this little kid. They don't know who he belongs to. So Chris gets in her car and drives to the next neighborhood over, and there's another group of people standing outside, and this woman in her pajamas hysterical, and pulls up and says, are you missing a child? And the woman said, yes. And Chris said, well, we've got him in my neighborhood. It's like, whoa, here's this person who lives on 15A, where this kid could have gone out and been hit, or God forbid, picked up by somebody and taken away, but thank God walked into Chris's backyard where there was a caring community of people who came out to help this child, and Chris was able to find the the mother and reunite the people. An example of a community that cares. A way that you can become transformed through that experience by thanking God that that child is okay and that people cared enough to rally around and figure that out. The little 
tiny daily encounters are ways that we are born again, born through the Spirit, transformed by that love that comes from God that we know in Jesus. Because in the end of this passage, it says, for God so loved the world, he sent his only son so that we could be saved. And we're not saved because Jesus suffered and died at this horrible death on the cross. We're saved because Jesus loved so much that he couldn't bear to hurt any of those around him. So he went willingly to his death because he could only exhibit love and not violence. So the important thing for us to remember is that we need to share the joy that we have found in being part of a community that's centered around the love of God. This is a generous and loving community. The only thing we don't do, potentially, is share it with those who don't belong to a generous, loving community centered around the love of God. We need to share our joy. We don't have to be as insistent, potentially, as those who have been born again and are desperate to convert us. We can let the Holy Spirit do the conversion part. Conversion part. But what is important is that we tell the story of what it's like to be part of a community that is filled and centered around this special, eternal love. 